credits available. I think it's it is small potatoes compared to the big oil and gas giants out there that you know have a much larger carbon footprint. But when you put all of these individual homes and businesses, put them all together, we're making a huge reduction to the carbon footprint out there. Hello, and welcome to episode number 69 of the Rose Bros podcast. This episode, we are joined by Steve Oslansky, partner at EnviroTech Geothermal, a geothermal business based out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. In a nutshell, EnviroTech is a heating and cooling company founded in 2006 with the goal of allowing consumers a cost-efficient opportunity to transition their home or business from fossil fuels to heating and cooling systems using renewable resources stored in the earth below your feet. EnviroTech grew 500% last year and they are expecting another 400% growth year in 2021 with no signs of slowing down. We sat down for a smooth cup of Rose Bros coffee and discussed how geothermal energy works, the costs and benefits to consumers, reducing your carbon footprint, alternative energy solutions, opportunities for the business going forward, and a lot more. Enjoy. Steve, good morning. Good morning, Trevor. Thanks for doing this. Well, thanks for having me, man. It's great to connect again. It's It's been a long time. It's awesome. I really appreciate you taking the time. For anyone that does listen to this podcast episode, Steve Oslansky, you are a partner at EnviroTech Geothermal. What does that business do and what's it about? So we specialize in geothermal heating and cooling. And we've been in business since 2006, which was prior to the last renewables boom where, you know, gas prices at that time were you know, 13 bucks and, and folks were looking at different ways to, to heat and cool their homes uh, more efficiently. Hmm. And so we're excited. You know, things are obviously picking up right now. You hear a lot of things about geothermal. And my brother-in-law started this business back in, like I say, 2006. And so I saw an opportunity where he was kind of burning the candle at both ends. And and so I approached him and, and uh, we made a fit. So quite a career change for myself but you know i learn as i go you know a lot of the the skill set that I've, I've built up over the last you know 15 years you know has been very complementary to to this business as well so it's uh it's been very rewarding what is geothermal energy so there's a couple different types you know you'll hear some of the bigger uh, bigger companies there that are using oil and gas technologies for uh, production of of energy and power so there's a few of those projects happening throughout the province right now where they're using old well bores. That's the energy side of things. We are in the heating and cooling business. So we take the consistent temperatures from the ground. We install pipe into the ground in residences and commercial buildings. And we take that heat and we put that into a heat pump in those structures. And we're able to cut the natural gas connection altogether and provide people with heating and cooling, hmm. uh, which is which is very cool because you know the systems not only do they heat, but in the in the summertime you can reverse it, and then you can cool your house or your building using using these systems as well. Geothermal energy then is it steam that comes up from the ground in layman's terms? In probably in the energy side of things, but with ours we have closed loop systems, so we have pipes that go into the ground. And they're filled with water and glycol mix, or pardon me, ethanol mix to make sure that it doesn't freeze. And they're closed loop. So what it does is it it just cycles through all those uh, those tubes and it gets the heat from the ground. And then it goes into the building and where it goes to the heat pump, which does a lot of the work. So the heat pump runs on electricity and then that's where it's heated up to like room temperature or or hotter. You know, we get a lot of questions about people saying well you know Alberta is cold and am I going to be comfortable and we have the ability to to heat your house so hot that you'll be uncomfortable so and it works the same way for for cooling we'll we'll make it so cold in there that you know you'll want to be outside (laughs) it's it's pretty cool to see you know we just uh, I met with a customer here this morning they hadn't had air conditioning in their house before and she was telling me how their their thermostat was showing 26 degrees and within 20 minutes they were down to 22 degrees and she said she'd never experienced air so so clean and so consistently cool 
was, I've had a lot of rewarding experiences in, in my career, but I would say, you know, even just this conversation this morning was probably the most rewarding hmm. that I've ever had today. Being able to provide people with the opportunity to heat and cool their home using renewable energy. It's clean. There's no risk of carbon monoxide and the systems work hmm. and they're happy. It, it was feel good this morning. I really enjoyed it. So when you bring the water up from the ground, you're, you're extracting from an aquifer below the house then? No, we just go just below the frost line. Mm. So just uh, any time where the pipe comes in contact with the ground and the natural temperatures from the ground, that's what gets pulled up through, through those pipes and then into the house. And then from there, it runs in through the heat pump and, and there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can extract heat from that. Some of the heat can also go into uh, hot water tanks. So these systems really, they've got the ability to do forced air in floor heating. Uh, so they'll replace boiler systems. They'll provide heat uh, up to 70 Fahrenheit for hot water, domestic hot water. And then from there, we can uh, also install the finishing tank to get that up to, you know, your, your typical uh, temperatures for, you know, having hot showers and that sort of thing. And then it also air conditions. So instead of having like the conventional air conditioning unit where you're having the hot air from your home being forced out against the hot air outside, that's what is the big electricity draw. And you know, you, you're mm-hmm. out there trying to barbecue a steak and it's humming and you can't hear yourself think and have a beer and you don't have any of this because it's all done just with the ground. So you don't have any of that external equipment. So mm-hmm. these systems have the ability to replace all of those types of equipment just by using uh, a heat pump. To make sure I understand geothermal correctly, is it, do you bring water up from the ground then or is it some sort of heat extraction from the ground? So it depends. If, if you're talking a closed loop system, it'd be heat extraction. There are some systems uh, that allow for an open loop, which you would bring up the, the temperatures from the earth, like Canmore, for example, where they've, they've got different shallow creeks and stuff like that just uh, below the surface. But in cases like that, you have the ability to do open loop where you do have um, you know, contact with that groundwater. But most of the systems that we install are, are closed loop systems. And so we either do... You know, the typical ones, there, there's a whole bunch of different systems that you can do. The, the most common systems are either horizontal, which is where we dig trenches in the ground and uh, install all the pipe and then backfill. That's right behind me here actually is a, is a horizontal trench that we're doing right now out by Drayton Valley. And then a vertical loop is where we bring in a water well drilling rig and then we have the ability to drill down. So we drill down about 250 feet. Uh, which isn't very deep, and then we're able to use the heat from the earth in order to, uh, again, heat or or cool, I guess, uh, people's people's homes. And so the heat gravitates up through the pipe into the pumping system in the house, then, and then it all goes from there. Yeah, essentially, oh. that's that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. So you're collecting the the heat. You know, in some areas we come across groundwater, which is great for conductivity. And then, um, you know, those make for really great systems uh, as well. But that's exactly the, the principle behind it, is <laughs> gathering that heat from the ground. And it, and it comes in contact with the pipes that we have below the ground and comes up. Because the ground, you know, temperature at about six feet is about 10 degrees. Hmm. So that's where your efficiencies come in when they go into the heat pump. You're already heated to that 10 degrees, so you don't have to come from whatever the external temperature Uh, is sort of thing. So that's where some of the efficiencies come in. hmm. The way that these systems work is we actually work with our design team to do a heat loss on every building that we install a system in. Hmm. So unlike some that, you know, will have a natural gas furnace and that sort of thing, and a contractor will buy a hundred of them and get them in, in bulk and get, you know, a good price on them, that sort of thing, and then install them in, houses that may not require that capacity of furnace and that sort of thing that's where you get you know unfortunately some of the uh, some of the waste and stuff like that whereas these systems we design them to the actual specifications of the home 
So we take the window size, we take the R value of the insulation that's in the house, we take whether or not there's you know, in-floor heat, um, and, and all of these factors come together to provide us with a heat loss. And then what we determine from there is the amount of tons required for this system. So we work in tons. So 12,000 BTUs essentially con converts to one ton of geothermal energy. Hmm. And that's how we design our systems. And that's how we, we are able to, to quote the jobs, um, you know, as accurately as we do. And then we go through the design process at that time, just confirm our numbers are correct and, uh, and install the, the right system for the right application. So what is the heat then that's being brought up when it comes up from the ground? So it's just the natural temperature of the ground. So when the sun beats down on the, on the earth's surface, it, uh, the, the, the ground retains the heat. Hmm. And so that's where we put our pipes down and we just use that natural heat that's already sitting there in the earth. Oh, I see. Yeah. If the pipe is able to collect that, that molecules of the heat, that's the idea? It is, yeah, mixed with the water. Oh, it, I understand. Uh, it provides the conductivity between the poly pipe that we have and the and the water. So it conducts the heat and brings that up into the into the ground source heat pump. Hmm. That's the part I was missing. I didn't understand how you collected literal heat <laughs> from the ground. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, they're they're using this technology throughout the world. You know, it's it's mostly common over in Europe and and in Iceland, but. Hmm. Um, you know, here it's, you know, it's definitely doable. We, we have a lot of people that are skeptics that are asking about the systems and, and say, you know, because Canada is so, so cold, they don't really believe that it works. But, you know, essentially once you get below the frost line, you know, the, the temperatures are there mm -hmm. and while it may not be extremely hot, like a, you know, like a hot spring or something like that it's still warm enough to, to be able to, you know, provide some of that heat up into the heat pump and, and, you know, take that initial heating energy, I guess. When you compare geothermal energy to what houses use nowadays, it's either natural gas or electricity. And the idea is that when you use geothermal, are you saving money or less carbon in print then? Yeah, there's essentially zero carbon footprint because we're not connected to any type of fossil fuels so all we need to run these systems is power preferably 200 amp uh, power um, because there is, there is more draw so you know as for cost savings and, and that sort of thing you're not going to have a natural gas bill at all my wife and i we're building a house right now and of course we're installing geothermal in there which we're super excited about mm -hmm. and my wife uh, well and myself too we we like a gas range so we're going to have to move away from that and we'll find induction. And obviously I love barbecuing, yeah. but nowadays they've got, you know, these electric smokers that perform in my opinion, better than a, a, a natural gas barbecue does. Hmm. So we're going to be set right up. You know, we're not even going to need any natural gas to come to the house, which is going to save us the, the metering fee. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like 130 bucks a month or something like that. You pay that throughout the summer months when you don't even use your gas. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's savings there, and then as well these ground source heat pumps, depending on the design, are anywhere from two to five times more efficient than a natural gas furnace. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a lot of efficiencies that come out of that as well. And so when you put all that together, your power bill is going to increase uh, a bit, but you know your overall bills are going to be a lot cheaper than than it would be running the natural gas a lot of people they run the numbers on the geothermal equipment versus the natural gas and that sort of thing and and in a lot of cases the geothermal systems are more expensive however that is that is due to the fact that you're paying or pre-buying a utility so the natural gas equipment and the geothermal equipment are quite comparable in costs. And, and sometimes the geothermal equipment, you know, is even more cost effective if you're starting to add some additional bells and whistles to the house, like air conditioning, uh, which is a, it is a huge power draw in the summertime when you use a conventional air conditioning unit. 
when you talk in floor heat as well and having a boiler system and all that sort of thing. So yeah. our equipment actually rivals the cost of natural gas. Now, the additional cost is in the ground loop. So whether you're going to be drilling, there's additional costs with uh, doing a vertical loop if you're in town because of the, the drilling that's required. We have to get a drilling rig in. We have to uh, properly dispose of the cuttings. And, you know, unless you've got a farmer's field where those can go, you're hauling it to a landfill and then you've got to pay disposal mm-hmm. there as well. You know, with, with and then with horizontal ground loops as well, we've got you know, a whole operator that will be out there to dig the trenches and, and then there's our labor and that sort of thing that go into that. So a lot of people will say, well, you know, it's, it's, it's more cost effective to, to go natural gas and, and they're trying to calculate the returns on the, on the geothermal side of things, but they're not always comparing apples to apples. And ultimately the return on a natural gas system is zero. Hmm. You don't make any money back by installing a natural gas system. Now with the geothermal, yes, you pay a little bit upfront to get that ground loop, but you're prepaying for your utility. Hmm. So, you know, saving that, you know, the the metering fee per month, that's the differential. And that's what needs to be calculated when people are trying to determine what the, what the returns on these systems are. Hmm. And there's no carbon offset with the geothermal system itself. When you bring in electricity though, Critic might say that the electricity is fossil fuel generated. How are you able to make sure the electricity is clean or is it? Well, that's, that's up to the, that's up to the governments to, to figure out how that piece works. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I had the same, I had the same question. It's like, yeah, but you know, we're using, you know, it used to be coal, Coal natural gas and, and, you know, what are we going to be doing in the future? But the thing about that is, when it comes to the production of electricity, it's up to you know the government and the power providers to determine what that next you know component of of energy production is going to be. Hmm. You know, there's a number of projects out there where you know they're getting more involved in the wind, the solar. Uh, obviously, there's some some companies that are coming up right now that are looking to use geothermal for the production of energy. Mm-hmm. So as that shift occurs we'll use what is whatever is the most accepted Mm. source of energy at that time Mm. i i truly believe that we're going to see here uh you know at some point these geothermal heating and cooling systems being powered by geothermal energy you know there's already companies that are are working out there right now uh you know some have the capability of of powering several thousand homes well if all of those homes were also had geothermal heating and cooling, you would be then fully sustainable yep. and fully renewable. And That's cool. uh, so, you know, it is going to take a shift, but it's it's going to be, you know, we'll use whatever type of energy is required to, uh, or, or socially accepted at, at that time. When you need the little electricity to help with the geothermal energy system, in layman's terms, is it a lot of electricity that you're going to need, or is it just a little boost here and there? Yeah, so it's a little bit more. So the the thing that consumes the energy is the heat pump. Mm. So these systems are intended to be run efficiently as possible. So you know, we tell people if you're comfortable at 22 degrees all year round, set set your thermostat at that. And you'll have consistent, you know, either heating and cooling, depending on the time of year. I always call them the thermostat jockeys, the ones that are constantly turning the thermostat up and down. Well, that draws on your heat pump, which draws more electricity. So, you know, you want to run these efficiently Hmm. as you can. And that's how they're, they're intended to be operated. I guess someone might ask, is your electricity bill going to go up if you do an install of the geothermal? It will. Yeah, it will. But, you know, overall, I think most people, depending on the heat loss of their house, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you've got the proper windows and the, the proper R-valued insulation, that sort of thing, you've got a good sound home, you shouldn't experience too much heat loss with something like that. So mm-hmm. you're going to see the savings mm-hmm. uh, on a monthly basis. 
would it be possible right now in in larger urban centers because each house would require some sort of well into the ground or how do you apply it to places with a denser population it really depends on the situation like right now we're doing a lot of work out at the Blatchford project here at the city Edmonton city center airport which is a hmm. one of the largest green communities in North America and so what the city has done is they have drilled a number of holes there um, and run it into a district energy system. I see. So the city is acting, well, they, they are the utility. And then anybody who purchases a home in that uh, subdivision, they have the ability to tap off mm -hmm. and use that geothermal heat. That's cool. And so we do all the installations into, into all the different residences. Well, not all of them, but we're working with several builders out there right now to install the heat pumps in, in each of the units. So there is definitely the opportunity to do that in an urban setting. Hmm. I guess at the end of the day, the earth is one giant ball of molten lava. So there's no shortage of heat. As long as the sun keeps shining and keeps warming the yeah. earth, uh, we'll, we'll always have it. Hmm. With carbon imprints, has there been studies done on, I guess there's little to zero carbon emissions? That's right. Yeah, not, not from the residence itself, uh, but hmm. like you say, perhaps through the, through the power side of things. Actually, I've been trying to explore with, um, with different carbon credits and, yeah. and that sort of thing. Because I see there being a real opportunity there. You know, if a homeowner or business owner decides to get off of natural gas, mm -hmm. well, there should be some some credits available. But anybody listening on this podcast, if they've got any idea how to crack that code, I mean, I'm I'm happy to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I think it's it is small potatoes compared to the big oil and gas giants out there that you know have a much larger carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. But when you put all of these individual homes and businesses and put them all together, we're making a huge reduction to the carbon footprint out there. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you know, folks need to be, you know, acknowledged for that. Mm -hmm. It seems like if you could just get around the hurdle of replacing the legacy infrastructure, or if you are in an area that is building new infrastructure, the opportunity is there to have huge carbon offsets. Absolutely. And, and there's different government incentives right now as mm -hmm. well that are allowing for this transition. Mm -hmm. um, so the city of Edmonton, for example, they've got uh, incentives for homeowners looking to do retrofits. Uh, the energy savings for business program allows for, you know, a lot of incentives for businesses that are looking to install geothermal or do retrofits. Uh, the government of Canada just came out with the green retrofit program. So they're providing funding to residences that, mm -hmm. um, you know, are looking to convert as well. So there's a, there's a lot of different incentives out there. You just need to know how, how to find them and how to properly stack them. So, um, you know, with that, there's a number of energy advisors that are out there and they'll come into your home. They'll take a look at uh, either your home or business and determine um, you know, the the carbon footprint that could be minimized as a result of converting over to geothermal. And and so there's a lot of pretty, you know, really cool initiatives that are going on right now with this, M making it much more interesting for people to want to to convert. Yeah, that is cool. At the same time, you've got other options like solar and what other alternatives are there? There's, there's cogen type systems that that people are looking into, but you know, I would say the ones that will probably minimize the, the carbon footprint the most would be the geothermal hmm. because we, you know, we cut off natural gas altogether to the house. Uh, and solar is a great complement to that, whether or not somebody wants to, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that would be you know, go net zero or, or, um, go off the grid altogether, which, you know, has its own challenges and that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, solar and geothermal installed together is, is a huge compliment. That's cool. Do you guys, not that it's a bad thing, but do you find yourselves competing against each other with project installations or selling your story? <laughs> not so much, actually. We do have a lot of clients, though, the geothermal clients that are also interested in solar. Yeah. You know, we, we do work with uh, some different solar folks and, and introduce them to our clients and, and that sort of thing. Uh, to help 
with uh, you know their offsetting of, of power. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's definitely some opportunities there, but I, I wouldn't say, you know, I don't see too much on the competition side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pe- people are, you know, they either want solar or geothermal mm-hmm. or a combination of, you know, of each of those. Do you find yourself and your business partner having to sell or tell the story, educational marketing with the business like geothermal energy, or is it fairly intuitive for people? How does that work? There's a lot of education. Mm. Yeah. Which is, which is great because it, it allows for us to share, you know, not only our story, but you know, the, the benefits of, of geothermal heating and cooling. Mm-hmm. And so we've gotten, uh, you know, a lot of exposure lately, which we're great, very grateful for. Yeah. And working with, you know, home builders, um, you know, folks that are looking to build new homes. Our, our clientele is, you know, we've got a huge range of, of clientele that we work with. It seems every conversation that we have, we're having to tell that story. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we get a lot of calls from people that are looking to convert to geothermal energy. They've got a number of questions about it, uh, you know, very much maybe skeptics about it. Mm -hmm. We know that these systems work, we guarantee them. And on a situation, some of them require some different engineering designs and that sort of thing too, to to make sure that they work. So Mm -hmm. I do think it's a a mindset shift. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, what I've been seeing the last while, of course, here in Alberta, you know, all, all we've ever really known as oil and gas and which has been fine and and oil and gas you know still has its place Mm -hmm. but i think this transition is just is is more about the energy diversification and and different ways that we can Mm -hmm. minimize our our footprint as well Mm -hmm. and i mean what better way than to just use a natural heat that comes right from the ground yeah yeah absolutely it seems like if the costs are there it's a (laughs) no-brainer yeah Actually, that's funny you say that. One of the home builders that we're dealing with, that's exactly what they said. Mm-hmm. They're like, this is a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. You know, we want our business, we want our home building business to be recognized as sustainable builders and building you know, greener, more energy-efficient homes. Mm-hmm. And to them, that, uh, they said exactly that. It was a no-brainer for them. Mm-hmm. In terms of the business, you are a co-founder with is your brother-in-law? So it's my brother-in-law. He started it in 2006, mm-hmm. and I came on board here uh, recently and bought into the company. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, one other guy who is, um, he's got a re- refrigeration and millwright background, mm-hmm. and we brought him uh, in as well. So now there's three of us partners. Uh, we just hired uh, another person here. Actually, his first day is today. The, the business is growing, and and you know, we see the likelihood that we're going to be hiring again before too long. Was it a big risk starting the business? A lot of capital up front or was it kind of a, an opportunity that was too good to pass on? Uh, I was, I would say a combination, you know, certainly for me and my background that I came from and, you know, having 15 years of experience in the land business, and making the transition to be an entrepreneur and uh, take much less of a salary than you know mm-hmm. than I've had for many many years. Mm-hmm. For that, it was a risk for you know for myself and and my family. Mm-hmm. Obviously, investing in the company as well, but I I really I don't see much risk in it. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a pretty sound investment, and you know I'm quite confident that. Um, you know, we're going to be able to get get our return here, you know, hopefully fairly soon. So I didn't I didn't see much of a risk. Uh, you know, obviously the business has been in place and has been functioning, mm-hmm. and it, the business had just gotten to a place where it was un, unable to grow much further just due to resources. Mm-hmm. You know, which is similar to a lot of businesses. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, with us, we're we're doing a lot more things on the marketing side and uh, you know, we're getting a lot more jobs and, and we suspect that we're likely to grow. You know, our goal is to grow 400% here this year, which I think we'll easily achieve in terms of revenue, in terms of revenue. That's cool. 
not easy to do either. <laughs> no, no. And it, it's, uh, you know, it, it takes a number of hands and, and everybody rowing in the right direction. Right. So yep. the first few months we were all kind of understanding where our expertise mm-hmm. kind of fell within the business. And, um, and it was all hands on deck. Mm-hmm. You know, we were all out there digging in the trenches, installing pipe, getting back with, you know, dirty hands and getting on our keyboards and mm-hmm. doing calls with different builders and, and different clients and that sort of thing. And, and we were doing it all. And, and up until, you know, just even in the last couple of weeks, we've had a bit of a mindset shift where the paperwork and, and the office stuff was lagging behind because we were out there doing the physical labor. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, so we've had to make some decisions as to how to, to move forward on that. And that, you know, meant bringing on another person. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to see how that, you know, how that shift kind of naturally happens. Mm-hmm. It's about 15 years old now, the business. Have you seen kind of a shift in the sentiment towards accepting geothermal energy a little more now? Yeah, certainly, you know, accepting it. But, you know, th- these systems are not uncommon. Uh, I know even for myself, we went to go and do a service at a house and we drove right into the middle of Short Park mm-hmm. and pulled up to a house that looked just like every other house. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it had geothermal installed since, you know, the mid 2000s. I've learned the last little while that there's a lot more of these systems than people realize. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the people that we talk to along the way, they they love their systems. Hmm. They they've been working for them. Some of them don't necessarily work. I mean, there's <laughs> there are some horror stories out there, no question about it. You know, there's some backyard engineers that tried to design these themselves and undersized them and right. didn't use the right pipe in the in the ground. And you know, there's a whole pile of different things that have went wrong with these systems. But if done properly. Uh, our, all of our customers are super happy with the systems and, uh, Hmm. uh, you know, and that's, that's pretty cool to see. It seems like maybe the the worries about carbon is more nowadays and that carbon in the atmosphere, everyone has their opinion, but maybe that's part of the reason why geothermal is a little bit more mainstream nowadays is the, the concerns about carbon in the atmosphere. Yeah, I would say that's very true. And the cost of it. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're penalized here with the carbon tax for, for you know, using some of the cleanest resources, mm-hmm. oil and gas resources in the world mm-hmm. here in Canada, and uh, we're penalized for it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. people are done with being penalized. Yeah. And uh, so they're looking at other alternatives so that they don't have to pay that carbon tax that, you know, again, just here April 1st mm-hmm. increased again, and it's going to continue to increase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, rightfully or wrongfully, the carbon tax, I guess, is having its effects with businesses like you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, it's impacted other businesses in the negative. I guess that is the intended consequence. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm still an advocate for oil and gas. It still has its place. There's no question about it. But if we can find ways to be more efficient mm-hmm. in energy, because that's what these systems do and minimize our footprint and, mm-hmm. you know, allow for cleaner yeah. air. And, you know, I'm for that as well. I think that's the misconception is a, a lot of people who may be in traditional hydrocarbon business aren't for the alternatives. But in reality, it's it's not like that. It's it's more of what's economic and rational versus taking a, an approach, whether you're for or against alternatives. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the key you know, the key market is energy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those big multinational companies, we've seen a lot of them shift into the renewable space because they recognize that there's transition happening of some type Mm -hmm. and they recognize the opportunity to Mm -hmm. continue their business just in a different direction. Yeah, That's the beauty about this is companies have the ability to to adapt. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think geothermal, especially in Alberta, there are so many brilliant minds out there that have so much subsurface knowledge for sure about the different you know well types and, and how they're completed 
and the ground temperatures and the pressures and all that sort of thing. And so, you know, naturally, you know, it's been a, it's been a seamless fit for some of those folks to get into the geothermal side of things and, and leverage that knowledge um, just in a different, in a different uh, type of business. Have you noticed a lot of geothermal companies popping up now that it's more popular and you can actually make a business out of it? Or are you guys kind of the only ones out there? There are plumbing companies out there that do geothermal or try to do geothermal. Okay. But there is a lot that goes into it. And, and you know, we have a, we have a good partnership with our supplier who, you know, is very helpful in helping us design some of these systems and providing the right products and that sort of thing. So, you know, I don't see a ton of companies per se that are focusing on geothermal hmm. um, at this time, although there is, you know, some different competition out there. Uh, not anybody that I would say specializes in geothermal. That's all we've done since 2006 is geothermal. You know, it hasn't been a combination of, you know, we install natural gas systems and then somebody asks, you know, oh yeah, we'll install a geothermal system as well. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's been geothermal for the last 15 years. So when you look out at the marketplace, you don't necessarily worry about competitors right now. I would say we still do for sure. Mm -hmm. There's still some different competition out there, but it's, it's interesting because the, the industry is just gaining more kind of recognition that a lot of folks are calling us because we have, you know, we're, we're, we specialize in the geothermal, mm -hmm. but there are home builders out there that, you know, they've been working with ABC plumbing for, you know, the last 50 years. And those companies, you know, uh, have decided to not entirely convert, but install the odd system. Hmm. So, you know, we are still kind of sifting through that to, to see what the competition looks like. But hmm. uh, for us, we're pretty comfortable with hmm. our reputation. Our rep reputation is, has been so good. And you look on Google, we've got five stars. We actually we build relationships with our clients. Mm -hmm. So for the last week we were out at a person's or a couple's house doing an install and they really wanted to minimize their carbon footprint and went with geothermal. And here we were, you know, in their yard and in their home for the last week working alongside them and building that type of personal relationship. Mm -hmm. So I need to go out there today and, and follow up and, and hear how pleased they are with the system, hear their, their um, you know, how happy they were with us as a company showing up. Mm -hmm. That says a lot. It's about who you deal with. And that's important to us as we grow this business is doing our best to maintain those personal relationships mm -hmm. and provide the customer service and answer our phone after hours and, and do all those types of things that will set us apart. Hmm. Is there much or any proprietary technology involved in the business now, or is it kind of just a technical know-how? Yeah, more technical know-how. Certainly there's different heat pumps where hmm. you know, some will have, you know, patents on some of the equipment and that sort of thing. But, you know, generally there are, you know, there's a number of, of suppliers out there. Um, hmm. you know, I'd say similar to solar, it, it just depends on which, mm -hmm. you know, which supplier, um, you appreciate the products. Some of the products are easier to work with than others. Um, you know, obviously with, with the way that they're designed, they're more efficient you have less troubles with them. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the personal relationships there as well. You know, I know with, with our supplier, um, GeoSmart, we're very grateful for the relationship that we have with them. Hmm. And we'll call them after hours if we're out, you know, servicing somebody where their their heat has went down and it's minus forty, and we're trying to figure something out and, and troubleshooting and having issues. Mm -hmm. And we'll call them, and and they answer uh, they answer our calls at any time. So you know, we're very appreciative to have that relationship with them as well. What's the biggest challenge the business has faced? Yeah, the the biggest challenge I would say is getting out there and showing the skeptics that these systems actually do work. Hmm. You know, we, we deal with a, a lot of like very knowledgeable people that 
you know, sometimes, you know, bring in different, you know, they bring in their mindset from oil and gas and, and, you know, they're trying to run the economics on, on these things. And, and, uh, you know, really you just need to focus that, you know, these systems do work. Mm -hmm. We've got a number of happy customers that are more than willing to, to provide reference for us and, and the economics are there. You know, I, I keep going back like natural gas equipment has a has a rate of return of zero. Mm -hmm. You know, once that equipment fails, you've got to replace it all. Whereas, you know, these ground loops, they're good forever. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, your heat pump has to be replaced, you know, similar to a, a natural gas furnace. You know, it should be good for 20 years sort of thing. So um, I would say it is it is the skeptics. Uh, you know, I've had some calls with some very large builders and their immediate response is, is no, hmm. you know, they're, they're not interested in this type of shift for, for whatever reason, whether it be, you know, economics, they're looking at the bottom line or whatever they're doing to come up with their decision. Uh, but on the other hand, we're dealing with some builders that think that they'll never go back to natural gas. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they see it, they see the, the, the value in the systems and they want to continue to build their brand as being a more environmentally responsible builder. And so mm -hmm. with that, you know, those are the types of clients that, that we want to work with, like-minded people. You know, if there's a skeptics there, you know, they'll learn over time that, uh, you know, this is the way that, that things are going. Mm -hmm opportunities what would you say is the biggest opportunity for the business going forward on the flip side i think there's a ton of opportunity um, just converting one by one uh residential or maybe more towards the larger scale commercial projects there's a definitely a combination there you know the what i'll what i'll say is i'm a i'm a bit of a squirrel in my mind and a bit of a visionary as to all of the different things and and i'll find myself you know on turning over one st stone and learning something that leads me to go turn over another five stones and so for me it's trying to be able to corral my thoughts and stay focused because i believe there's so much opportunity out there hmm. that you know i have to i have to set specific goals for myself to, you know try and keep myself on track Mm -hmm. because there is just so much opportunity, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. We sit down with the team and, and we uh, build out our goals for the, for the year and for the quarter. And it's been exciting because, you know, even looking back, we've absolutely crushed our Q2 goals, which we did that weeks ago, which, you know, is, is very exciting to us. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, oppor opportunity exists all over. It would seem like maybe converting house by house is something that you guys could chase or you could chase some of those larger municipal projects where new new communities are going in and you have the opportunity to really set up the new community on a, on a geothermal grid. Yeah, 100%. You no, know, those are those are really good opportunities that that we're seeking. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we've got some some pretty cool goals set up for even a few years down the road that you know, I'm hoping at some point I can share some more info on. Absolutely. That's cool. Well, as someone who's also interested in the renewable space and green energy, I think it's really cool. It's just a matter of finding or making these types of businesses economic. And it sounds like you guys are doing it. Yeah, I think, I think we're there. We really are that, you know, the cost differential isn't that much. And, uh, you know, if you add the incentives on top of it, mm -hmm. You know, we're talking with some people here on some of the larger jobs where it doesn't make any sense for them to install a natural gas system mm -hmm. just because, you know, our equipment is, is much more cost efficient and, um, and more efficient to operate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I think that's a really great summary of the business and how you guys view it and the opportunities, the challenges. What's coming next? What's the biggest, the next big milestone then for the business? Do you guys have any announcements that you want to make? Yeah, absolutely. I think for us, you know, we're, we're definitely keen to grow in the residential space. Um, you know, we love dealing with the homeowners, the home builders, you know, anybody who, um, you know, recognizes this, 
this energy transition. Uh, there's also a lot of opportunity in the commercial space right now as well. There's there's incentives for businesses to convert to geothermal. Um, you know, there's opportunities for them to save on on their bills and save monthly and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of opportunity in in that space, and there's a lot of other opportunities throughout the province. You know, I th- I think that anybody who is living in a remote area that doesn't have immediate um, tie into natural gas, you know, you could save ten, twenty thousand dollars just by not having to tie in, you know, natural gas lines to the house and, and that sort of thing, depending on where you're located. Um, so there's a, a whole ton of benefits, you know, for farmers and in being able to leverage the the vast amounts of lands that they have you know, they can do large systems. You know, we're talking with a number of uh, folks right now that, you know, we're talking with with a company that is looking to build a recreation facility, which is going to consist of a hockey rink and a swimming pool. And they're going to be able to pull the heat from the building and extract from the heat from the ice plant and be able to put that heat into the swimming pool. Very cool. And so there's a lot of different opportunities, um, you know, that we're working on like that. And and so, you know, for us, it's it's extremely exciting to see where this business could go. Uh, we just have to be mindful of, you know, making sure that we stay in the right lane as we grow and, and expand and, and not moving away from, you know, from our core values as well. Where can people learn more about the company? Our uh, website is a really good resource, so www.envirotechgeo.com, um, or you can uh, watch uh, watch for our updates on LinkedIn. We're quite active on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. and uh, we're starting to grow more of a presence on Instagram as well. So, um, yeah, you can you can ch- check those spots out, learn about some of the the services that we have, some of the products, and even watch. Um, you know, some of the installs that we're doing as well. Awesome. That was a great conversation. Why don't we, we wrap it up there and I appreciate you taking the time. That sounds great. Yeah. I appreciate you reaching out Trevor. And- hey, thanks for listening, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If you liked what you heard, check out rosebros.ca where we will have upcoming shows. You can also find our coffee and chocolate there where we plant one tree for every bag or bar sold through our partnership with One Tree Planted, a cool not-for-profit organization focused on global reforestation. Until next time, happy coffee drinking.